Thank you, Sig. Uh, I think there was a <clears throat> wonderful overview and I think also a, a nice uh, rationale to outlaying the path that we've gone. Uh, and certainly uh, you've really outlined that nice, very nicely also demonstrating some of your, of your beautiful work in, uh, in, in both uh, uh, animal models as well as the clinical data that we are sharing here. So um, I just wanted to hone in a little bit onto the, uh, uh, b the basis and the rational between uh, HA Peak. Uh, again, my disclosures, uh, I do teaching and again, I do consulting as well as uh, teaching for Innovasis here. Uh, so here are my disclosures. I uh, just wanted to uh, take it where you left with Peak. Uh, um, Peak uh, is colorless, uh, it's organic, uh, it's a thermoplastic polymer. Uh, and the interesting thing is when you look uh, at a study in, published in 1998 uh, is that the elastic modulus of Peak is that you see here is uh, very similar uh, compared to cancellous bone uh, and it's a little softer than cortical bone, uh, but definitely within the uh, realm and, and within the range. Uh, why is this so important? Well. If you graft material in the body, and that uh, it may, may be bone, maybe any other tissue, and again, my, my laboratory at the university, we do some transplants uh, into the spinal cord, for example, and anywhere you transplant tissue, you really want to make sure that your transplant has exactly the same elastic modules. Otherwise, you don't have integration of the tissue, so it can't reinforce how, how important this is. So it's uh, biocompatible. Uh, the young modulus is very similar to bone, and I'll show you how HA peak actually improves upon that and just really cuts uh, right in between the cortical and cancellous bone. Uh, it's radiolucent. Um, I think all of us have had scans where you don't uh, recognize anything because uh, there's so much artifact. Uh, and the ease of manufacturing, uh, as Sig pointed out very nicely there, it's very important for us to to hone in on technologies that are scalable and that are uh, fiscally responsible. Uh, but the problem with Peak is that it's hydrophobic. So that means uh, bone is not growing onto the surface. Uh, and anybody who's ever explained the Peak graft knows that there's typically a little layer of uh, fib fibrotic tissue in around. So it really never integrates very well. Hydroxy appetite um, is uh, naturally occurring. It's a naturally occurring mineral, uh, and uh, it has calcium. Calcium appetite is the most common one, uh, and the name appetite is actually uh, is extremely interesting. It comes from the um, from Greek, uh, and me it means it to deceive or to be misleading because people uh, apparently often made mistakes and looked at this uh, stone and just. Uh, mistook it for other stones and so uh, because everybody sort of <laughs> called it wrong things people just called it the misleading or the deceiving rock um, so appetitis uh, means uh, deceiving or misleading so so now we take this uh, appetite and uh, on this appetite group group you can either put a hydroxyl group on it which is an OH or you can put uh, fluoride on it or you can uh, put chloride on it uh, and make uh, different minerals uh, Hydroxyapatite is, is very common in bone, and so 70% uh, is hydroxyapatite in bone. The rest is organic structures like collagen uh, and other sort of structures, and the rest is bone. So 70% of our bone is hydroxyapatite. So it makes a lot of sense to uh, look into that uh, for bone grafts. Um, if you look at HA peak, um, so it's composed of 80% peak and 20% uh, hydroxyapatite, which is integrated. Again, uh, different from uh, other materials that uh, peak cages that have hydroxyapatite on top and uh, are laminated. Uh, and we have had issues in the past with uh, dissolving of material and, and uh, layers coming off. So uh, HA peak is fully integrated. So it's, it's a mixture that is uh, mixed throughout. Um, and it has structural mecha uh, mechanical properties uh, that are osteoconductive. Um, and again, as mentioned, AJ is evenly distributed uh, through the material. Uh, this is one of the earliest studies uh, by Dr. Bonfield. Um, and I put up the graft because I thought it was really fascinating. So if you remember the slide I had on the first slide, I had the elastic modulus. Uh, and so what Dr. Bonfield did here, uh, so he looked at the elastic uh, modulus uh, by increasing the fraction of hydroxyapatite. And you see that it, uh, in, it goes from roughly, you know, probably two all the way up to 15. And interestingly, this is exactly the range of modulus that we have in bone. So where cancellous bone is roughly seven uh, and cortical bone is roughly 17. So uh, with hydroxyapatite, uh, with P as a HA uh, peak, you can pretty much cover the entire spectrum 
uh, of the elastic modulus of bone, which I found really fascinating. Um, and uh, again, as mentioned before, uh, so what they found with these in these early studies that had that it had osteoconductive uh, um, uh, uh, um, features, and so they saw that bone was in contrast to peak that bone was uh, adhering to the material uh, and not uh, repelled. Um, and there's a nice. Uh, study which I'll show in a second. Again, here's one more time the material properties, very similar. Um, the flex, uh, for example, impact, flex, uh, flex modules, flex strength, tensile strength, uh, and the tensile uh, elongation. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, with the HA peak, um, it's very, very similar to cortical bone. Again, uh, what I outlined before, uh, we don't only have cortical, but we also have cancellous bone. So it's right in the middle between a cortical and cancellous bone in terms of uh, these properties. Uh, and again, as we talked before, um, with the imaging uh, capabilities, here's, for example, uh, an x-ray that of one of my patients. Uh, and uh, the x-rays are so good that in a lot of patients, you don't even have to get a CT scan uh, because you can clearly see the uh, osteointegration. Uh, but here's an example. Um, in a study where they compared it with titanium, uh, with stainless steel, cobalt, chromium, and you can see the artifact uh, on the CT scan, which is quite uh, severe. So one of the uh, true benefits uh, is that you can see uh, after a placement of these devices that you can see and observe, look at the foramen of uh, stenosis and also the osteointegration. Uh, you see that extremely well. Uh, and again, just to mention that this is a graft of the only uh, six month uh, post-op, which I find uh, still remarkable. Um, again, but let's go back to the uh, material properties. Um, so an in vitro study where they had a cell line, an osteoblast-like cell line, they co-cultured it with either peak or HA uh, peak. Um, and so this study was uh, extremely important because it uh, showed that there was no uh, cell toxicity uh, seen with this, which is uh, obviously of, of greatest importance. Um, and then they uh, were able to show... Uh, that bone was growing onto the surfaces, which I'll show in the next slide. Uh, upregulation of proteins related to calcium ion processes in cell adhesions. Uh, and most importantly, uh, it indicated uh, they measured the alkaline, uh, alkaline phosphatase activity in an assay. Um, and you can see there, after 14 days, they saw a, a significant uh, increase in uh, alkaline phosphate, phosphatase activity which typically indicates the osteoblast differentiation pathways. Um, so nice data there from, uh, from in vitro uh, that uh, it actually makes a quite, quite a big difference uh, of, w between those two different materials. So between peak versus uh, HA uh, peak. Um, and again, as, as mentioned before, um, here was another preclinical uh, study where they um, put a block of peak uh, into a cervical spine of a sheep uh, and looked at it at six and 12 weeks. Um, and what they saw is uh, exactly that. So here's the peak, HA peak, here's the uh, standard peak. And what you can see there in blue is connective tissue that makes that film. Uh, and again, most people have seen that probably. When you take out a peak graft, it's always a little bit loose. There's always a little bit of connective tissue around. Um, and that um, uh, approximation of uh, an apposition of bone is, uh, uh, very different uh, compared to HA peak where the bone grows all the way to the material. Um, and they were able to show higher quality bone bridging at 6 and 12 weeks uh, and bone on growth onto the end plates and all faces of the antibody device. Uh, so clearly um, a difference between uh, HA and a na naive uh, peak there. Um, here uh, from that study, a couple of CT scans, allograft, peak, uh, HA, uh, and uh, peak. Uh, and you can uh, see the difference uh, here in the CT scans of 12 weeks and uh, 26 weeks, um, looking at the uh, most uh, uh, robust uh, fusion uh, with the HA peak. Uh, they quantified the quality of the new bone bridging uh, and again uh, thought that the uh, uh, HA peak had enhanced uh, quality of bone bridging there. Um, so uh, one slide to exciting stuff that um, if you look at these papers online, what's possible? I, I was intrigued by this new uh, technology. Uh, given that uh, HA particles, uh, so HA peak is, uh, uh, is not hydrophobic, you can actually use it uh, microparticles uh, and you can coat uh, with those particles, uh, as you can see here, 
you can charge them and then coat substrates with that. So uh, theoretically, it would be feasible to use this material also to coat implants. Uh, certainly, it might be of benefit uh, to something. Um, for example, uh, screws or cross connectors or whatever you want to do. Um, and uh, the other interesting uh, uh, new thing in the literature is uh, that you can now take this HA peak, given that uh, it's through and through the same material, uh, and you can produce porous uh, and bioactive peak implants for fusion. Um, and that's, uh, I think, a, a very much like SIG outlaid. Uh, I think the difference that we have seen with uh, titanium um, with uh, having a porous surface, I think it's going to be very similar and I think equally exciting of having a, a, the transitioning from the uh, smooth surfaces uh, to a porous uh, uh, HAP implants. So I think those were the two most exciting new developments that uh, I saw during the last uh, one or two years. Um, and the uh, products that we have currently available are as a uh, Sega Outland, we have uh, different T lift cages, A lift cages, uh, and the cervical system, uh, which I'm, I'm going to show a couple of cases with as, as well as the A lift. Um, and I think with that, I want to conclude quickly uh, here. Um, I think there's strong evidence uh, from uh, in vitro studies as well as in, uh, in vivo animal data that there's a good bone on growth. Um, you can image uh, very well. The module is similar to bone and can be fine-tuned exactly within that window of uh, cancellous and cortical bone. Um, and I think uh, in the end, this is going to be highly cost-effective.